All right, guys, uh, my name is Josh Smith. I'm the president of Montana Knife Company. Thanks for joining us today. So we've had a bunch of questions, I think really coming from our recent bear hunts that we did this spring and then the bear hunts that they've seen my, my you guys have seen my kid do about how to skin a bear. And of course, we're sitting here in the summertime. I don't have a bear right in front of me to skin. However, we did film the skinning of one of my bears up in BC this spring. So we're gonna plug some, some footage in of that, uh, of what we filmed while I kind of talked to you guys about how to skin out a bear. So first of all, once that bear has expired, you've gotten your photos and you're ready to go, uh, you wanna position that bear in a place that you, you can successfully skin it out without a bunch of dirt or maybe uh, interruptions from vegetation around you. So positioning the bear in a place that you can comfortably work is a, is a good idea. Maybe you drag that thing into the shade if it's a, if it's a hot time of year. Maybe you drag it out in the sun uh, if it's really cold out and you want a little bit of heat. So any animal that you take, you wanna cool down as fast as possible. So unless it's a really cold time of year, generally we're looking to get that hide off, that meat opened up, that carcass opened up, and we're wanting to get heat out of that bear. And even when you think it's cold, a bear's hide and all their fat and everything was designed to keep heat in. So even in cold weather, you wanna open up that carcass and cool down that meat. Yes, you can eat bear meat. It's actually very, very good. Uh, you just have to cook it well. And you know we tend to make a lot of sausage out of our bears. So let's get into the skinning out of a bear. I like to position uh, the items that I'm gonna use, like my med kit, my knives, open up my pack, get my game bags out, maybe lay out a tarp where you're gonna put the meat on it, or find a nice log that you can set those quarters on. Have all that prep work done before you're covered in blood and it's a big mess and you gotta go digging through your pack. All right, so you're gonna lay that bear out in kind of a starfish uh, uh, situation where he's on his back, legs are kind of spread out, and his front legs, arms are spread out as well to the side. You're gonna start by cutting from his anus all the way up through the center line of his stomach and through his chest, right really to the base of his neck. We're not gonna split up into the neck by his chin, any of that. Uh, it's not a big deal if you stop just a little bit short, even just in his upper sternum area. From that point, we're gonna make the cuts on all four legs. There again, on his front legs, uh, or what I would call my arm, uh, you're gonna cut on the inside starting at his paw where his paw tends to uh, bend and, and flex. You don't wanna cut into the actual pad of his paw. Let the taxidermist take care of that. So right at his wrist where that thing flexes, we're gonna start a cut. Kind of right inside the arm here or that leg where that, uh, that hair really comes together and it's kind of nice and long. We're gonna split and we're gonna come right up through his armpit and then across uh, if he has a nice white diamond, you might actually wanna go um, above or below that a little bit just to avoid that, but you can go right straight across his sternum here, or you tend to come across his, his uh, armpit and then up just a tiny bit above that diamond. From there, uh, the back legs, it's the same thing. It's actually just, it's not the very inside of his leg, it's above center a little bit, again, where that hair tends to be at its longest point. That's where we're gonna separate that. And again, where that back paw flexes, that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna run right up through the inner portion of his leg, uh, right to the center line cut as well. So now we have four cuts on his legs, as well as one up the center. From that point, you're gonna just start by rolling him into a position where you're gonna work on one side at a time, cape out, uh, cape out the quarters that are facing you. So. Maybe it's the front right and the back right. You're gonna skin that out, cape that stuff out, um, get that hide off of that quarter, and you're gonna remove that quarter of meat. When you're doing that, try to have it in a situation where you're not allowing that, that hide to fall down in the dirt and get a bunch of dirt and leaves and pine needles and stuff all over that hide. Try to roll that thing up or keep it in your hand. Uh, same with the leg, if you have a helper, having them hold it to where you're not letting that meat get down in the dirt, okay? Uh, if you're gonna have to get dirt on anything, make it the hide instead of the meat. Uh, the hide can be cleaned off later. 
it just gets a little sloppy. Even the one we did in BC, there's so many leaves and a bunch of stuff that it looks like it got kind of dirty. But again, it's just vegetation stuff that will clean off. Remove those quarters. Put those in a game bag or set them on a tarp where it's, where it's clean, um, on, a, on a nice clean log uh, like we did in Canada, and just to let that meat cool off and air out. If it's really, really hot, you can actually take a big cut in that quarter and open that thing up and expose that bone uh, in the center of that leg, that femur, to just let that meat get air and that, uh, that heat to escape. Okay, you're gonna roll that bear over and you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. You're gonna remove two more quarters, uh, keeping things clean, put those in bags. And then from that point, you're gonna skin the rest of that body of that bear around its backside, uh, its spine. Again, kind of skinning down to the spine, then rolling it and skinning the other way to where eventually you meet. And that hide should be laying under the carcass of that bear uh, completely unattached. Uh, as far as removing the paws, okay, we've skinned out that leg, but we still have that paw attached. Right where that wrist flexes is a joint in there, and you don't need a saw. You can take a little speed goat knife, a little blackfoot knife, and you can start to cut the tendons where that flexes. You provide a little flexion, you get the point of that knife down in there, and you cut a couple of those connective tendons inside of that joint, and you can cut that whole entire paw off of that off of that bear's leg, leaving it attached to the hide. Don't, do not skin out the paw in the field. Don't try and do any of that stuff unless you're truly an expert. And if you are, you're not watching this video, okay? Take that to your taxidermist. They will actually turn the paws and take care of that. From this point, uh, make sure you remove the back straps, the tenderloins, um, any of the other meat that you want from that carcass and you get those in the game bags as well That's some of the best meat. We definitely don't want to leave that behind. We don't want to be wasteful as hunters um, And lastly you want to remove the neck again leaving the hide on the head uh, Remove the neck from the carcass and once you free that up and again right at the base of that bear's head uh, Just like on an elk or a deer right at the base of the skull you can start to cut around all that and again, you provide some flexion and right at the base of the skull, you can cut through there. You don't need a saw. You don't need a big, big ass hatchet or an ax. You can just get in there with a small knife, cut all that connective tissue that holds that head on. You can remove that, remove the carcass from the hide that's laying there and then fold that hide up meat to meat. Okay. This leg here should fold around and meet this one meat to meat. Same with the back legs. Fold everything together, all meat to meat, and then roll it up from the tail right up to the head, and then you can take some paracord and, and actually tie that together in a nice ball to carry it. Or you can put that all in a separate game bag and put it inside of your pack uh, to pack out. So that's generally how uh, we break down a bear. And there again, you can, you can just take your time. Uh, you're not in a rush. Just make sure you keep things cool and clean Take your time, take breaks, uh, make sure it's easy on your body, easy on your back, um, and just go slow with it, leaving the paws on. Uh, don't cape out the head. And lastly, do not salt the hide when you get home. Uh, just get it straight to a taxidermist. If you can't go straight to a taxidermist, freeze the entire thing in your freezer. Uh, if you need to, if it's especially if it's been hot out and been a little while, unroll that hide in your freezer, spread that out and freeze it. If you ball that thing up and you roll it up with that head in, in it still and you put it in a freezer, all that hair in that hide will actually store heat and it can rot inside of that and, and the hair will start to slip. So that's why we wanna cool that thing down as fast as possible. Don't go put it in a creek. You don't need to do any of that unless you're absolutely uh, just unable to get that thing on ice or in a cooler. Uh, or into a freezer, then you may have to do something like that to try to preserve it. But we don't want to let that hair slip. A taxidermist will have a heck of a time. You know, another thing is to flesh out as much of the meat and the fat. If you're skinning that bear, skin it as close as you can to the hide, leaving little to no meat or fat on that hide. That'll be easier for a taxidermist to flesh it out. Then they will salt it. Do not salt it before the taxidermist has a time or a chance to, uh, to get it fleshed out. So that's how you break down a bear. Um, I hope you guys are successful this fall. Bear season's right around the corner. 
I know they're hitting the berries hard right now. Hopefully uh, you guys are successful. Thanks. Wow.